IT, forging IT security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everybody, it's Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. I'm here at Black Hat USA 2012 in Las Vegas, and I'm speaking with John Bradshaw. He is the senior sales engineer for Mandiant, and Mandiant is exhibiting here at Black Hat, and you're demoing version 2.2 of the Mandiant Intelligent Response. That's that correct. correct. Awesome. Now tell us, what. give us a rundown of some of the features of your new version. Okay. Well, the biggest feature that we have rolling out with 2.2 at Black Hat this year is that we've done a integration with the SIM and log management vendors. Two of the things that we're doing is one, as we know, Mandiant Intelligent Response can sweep endpoints looking for indications of compromise. We've built in an ability for those sweep indicators to automatically be sent to log management and SIM vendors in a format that they can digest and parse out and correlate into their alert actions. Also, we've integrated into the SOC Tier 1 analyst actions. So as part of the triage that they do with all of the event flow coming in, they can use the information out of a correlated alert and instruct Mandiant either automatically as the event triggers or through a Tier 1 triage action and have it start the, information, uh, the incident response process of gathering all that forensic data back so that if the uh, event is going to be escalated to the incident response team, they can begin immediately doing that investigation. So we've brought that time frame of starting the incident response process from, based on our discussions with hundreds of IR teams, from days, weeks, and sometimes never occurring down to a matter of 30 minutes. Wow. That's what is like the true benefit of condensing from days, weeks, never into minutes? Obviously, if you're the victim of an advanced targeted attack, you want to start that investigation as soon as possible, figure out what the full scope and extent of the attack is so that you can develop a comprehensive remediation plan and contain it. By enabling the Tier 1 analyst or the correlation engine itself to start the incident response process, we're shrinking that time window down to when the data is still valuable to the incident response team. If it's going to happen days, weeks, or even months or never, later, it allows the advanced targeting groups or the APT to get into the environment, establish their footholds, and start moving laterally through and start exfiltrating uh, intellectual property off the systems before the incident response investigation has even started. How was it possible to actually condense the process down? Well, when you look at most organizations, a medium-sized business is probably pulling in about 5,000 raw, unaggregated events every second. Mm -hmm. If you run them through most correlation engines, you're going to get about a 2% correlation rate. So even using SIM technologies, you're still going to be looking at 100 events per second. And that's really not something that a human is going to be able to triage. Most SOC Tier 1 analysts can really look at about 20 events per hour or 20 alarms per hour mm -hmm. and do an initial triage and they've got about three minutes to make that determination. Am I escalating this to the IR team or am I letting this one go? It's not going to be relevant into the organization. Part of what we can do to help enhance that decision process is through the sweeping that we do of the endpoints. If you have a very, what I would call, high fidelity alert, which means if this alert fires, I know I'm going into incident response, then you can have the correlation engine kick the action off automatically. The tier one analyst doesn't even have to be involved in the process of getting the IR information gathering process started. But if they are looking at correlation rules that are not so high fidelity, so it needs a little bit of human intervention, do I or do I not escalate, we can enhance that through our indicators of compromise to say, okay, I saw a malware beacon occur. My indications are that data exfiltration has already started or credential compromise has already started. And that should elevate those alerts to the top of the pile, allowing that tier one analyst to make the right decisions in time. Now, it sounds like the new speed of 2.2 is game changing. How do you foresee it making improvements in the industry down the road? I think one of the things that we see in the future is going to be an evolution of how security operations centers function and operate. 
Right now, we see that there needs to be a convergence with the Tier 1, Tier 2 teams and the incident response teams working more closely together. Mm -hmm. There also needs to be a closed loop process that once the incident response investigation has been completed, the information that comes out of that, the intelligence about what the attack involved, needs to be delivered back to the Security Operations Center so that they can then strengthen their defenses and learn how the intruder got in and what they need to do to keep them from getting back in the same way. Also, there needs to be a evolution where they become more of, um, for now I'll say, like a security defense center rather than an operations center. We need to start going on the hunt for these advanced attackers. We can't sit back and wait for these events to arrive into our SIM or into our log management and alert us. We need to start proactively going out into our environment and hunting for them and then sharing the intelligence so that we can be smarter about tracking the advanced targeting groups. What about any sort of counter strikes? That's more on a political policy issue, so maybe I'll reserve that answer for uh, people that make those kind of decisions. But I do believe in the future that policy will help drive um, how things are handled with uh, nation state sponsored type attacks along that nature, because really you have to basically encourage people and other countries to behave properly. And I think policy through how we do trade and things like that would be the best way to get that accomplished. Absolutely, and setting a good example. Always. Always. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us, John. You're I appreciate uh, it. Enjoy the rest of Black Hat and DEF CON. Will you be there? I will be on a flight home. Oh, well, <laughs> all right, we'll miss you. All right, see you later. <laughs> Thanks. Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts. Yeah!